Rescued me from 
giving up life to me. You are a spring of life to me. You are a spring of life to me. Good morning. Today is March 31st, 2020. And I've been up since about 2.30 in the morning. How about that? Seems like it should be early now, but it's uh, actually <laughs> late in the morning for me at the moment, which uh, wasn't by real choice. I had some very strange dreams. Woke up and realized there's just no going back to sleep. <clears throat> so... I've been trying to get going here, and um, I'm actually glad for it because it gave me an opportunity to uh, make a video. Yesterday, I, I, you know, I couldn't uh, muster the energy in the time I had to uh, between my other responsibilities um, to do one, and that's okay. And Primarily, you know, I do this as a uh, a shared thing because it actually um, helps me to focus and to take a little more time and articulate things that I might not otherwise think about. You know, I could take the same material, uh, topics, verses, you name it, and read it for myself. And not have the same uh, consciousness that I have when I feel that I'm I'm uh, breaking bread with other people. You know, the Bible's the, the bread of life, right? And there's a few things I want to cover today. You know, I, I'd really like this to be a short video. I wish I could just snap my fingers and it'd be five minutes long, but... It, it takes the time it takes, and I understand that unless somebody's joining me live at this time of day, or they're able to listen to this, like, as they're, I don't know what, cleaning the house, you know, and it's helpful to them. And I can only pray that, um, you know, my vocal style, the things I say, that there's somebody who actually uh, benefits, and and uh, can listen to this and get something out of it and you know I trust the Lord bring the right people who need it and that he gives gives me grace in their sight you know uh, and I thank you for it I thank you for um, being as interested in in this as I am <clears throat> and I thank God that I'm interested in his promises for what if without his promises, what do we have? I've known in my own walk in faith and in my own life that no matter how smart I am, how how uh, informed I may think I am about something, how much reason I can apply, how much analysis, how many solutions, you know, I'm I'm no match for all that can be thrown at me. There's a lot of things that are beyond our control. And man versus man, man versus self, man versus nature. You name it. All the themes. All the dramas that we as people can go through individually in our lives. And uh, I, I'm, you know, I've got the stream a, a little bit audible. It's coming through the microphone and directly. And I, you know, I'm still working this out as to how, what the right levels are and things. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I don't, I, you know, I didn't really 
check to see where this mountain stream is, but um, for a minute I thought I used it before, but I don't think I have. I've made a commitment to myself to get outside of nature more this year. <clears throat> and, um, and it isn't, isn't it interesting the times we're in that, that uh, wow, that's been thwarted, or at least there's forces against me going anywhere. And in some places, as of the last day or two, people are being arrested, uh, fined. You know, that's going to increase. Apparently a pastor got arrested yesterday morning or yesterday sometime, turned himself in um, in Tampa for having a, a meeting. I, I believe the church is about 4,000 strong, but 500 people met Sunday morning and Sunday evening. And the authorities warned him, and ultimately they arrested him. Now, there's a lot of things to be said about that. Um, one is... Well, is the guy under their authority as far as the 501c3. A lot of churches are. And they may or may not have jurisdiction. I haven't really sought th thought this, you know. First of all, there's so many issues that are coming up. I don't have time to... Uh, I mean, unless you're like a full-time YouTuber or independently wealthy or something like this... And and so inclined, you gotta you can't just talk out of your behind. You know you gotta really look into these things because intentionally, all these issues are very murky. I listened to the sheriff's speech and he had two pastors that were there and also the state attorney, and I I see their point. I believe some of the premise is wrong. At the same time, there's something something about legal authorities, and I'd have to look into that. Um, as to whether or not they could violate this guy's First Amendment protections from government and his rights to uh, assemble, rights to uh, freedom of religion. and I don't know. There was a lot of issues I saw with the, the young sheriff's um, public announcement of what was going on in their community that I didn't hear any, any of the reporters speaking up and challenging him on and uh, you know he was talking about presidential eject uh, executive orders and the guy disobeying them and you know I don't I'm not so sure that in the state's rights that that executive order has that kind of power I don't know I haven't uh, I mean it's super early in the morning I'm I, I'm just thinking of things right now that uh, um, in relation to this nature, you know, being out in nature, God's creation, beside the still waters. Now, why does why would the Lord, why would the psalmist um, make a point to say that the Lord leads him beside the still waters and restores his soul? If that wasn't an indication that to be in nature, to be in the beauty of his creation, restores our soul, restores our mind, will, and emotions. What's the world want to say restores your soul? Have a drink, it'll be good for you, you know? Here, take this pill for your depression, for your anxiety, for your lack of energy, it'll be good for you. It'll restore your soul. Well, it might for a minute, but it also takes something out of you, too. Um, the Lord would lead us beside still waters. He would lead us in the shadow of a great mountain. He would lead us into the, the sounds of the forest. He would lead us beside a beach. You hear the crashing of the waves. You know it's true. It's kind of moments and time spent restore our soul. So that's why I'm choosing to have these videos because it reminds us of there are places. There are places outside the um, 
the terror of, of man, you know? We're being terrorized. The entire world right now. Almost doesn't matter where you are from, from Bombay to Bangladesh, from Tokyo to London, from New York to Los Angeles, Honolulu to Bogota. People are being terrorized in fear and confined to their homes and in various places, different different orders and consequences, which it's a fluid situation. It's malleable. Uh, yesterday, the leading epidemiologist that's uh, heading, I believe he's the epidemiologist uh, on the presidential task force dealing with this plan, planned demic. Um, he cited could be 100,000 to 200,000 dead in the United States. Well, I did the math, and sure, that's a lot of people. It is. And it could affect, you might know someone it affects. You know, that's horrible to lose someone, especially unnecessarily. And, uh, but if you think about it rationally, let's say 200,000 people die, 200,000 Americans. There's around 300 million Americans. That's point zero zero six seven percent Not even 1%. I suppose you could round up. Let me, uh... Let me double check that. Just a moment. I'm not going to do the math. I just want to. I think I had it. Uh, okay, no, it's not going to work. I'd have to pull it up again. I'm pretty sure. I, all I'm looking for is if there's another zero point zero 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 six seven percent. It's it's a, it's at least point zero zero six seven percent. If you think that, if you really think about that, let's say that's true, which I don't believe that'll be true. Unless this thing is, they pour some accelerant on it. Who is they? The powers that shouldn't be. If they do some kind of, they pour some kind of accelerant, accelerant, they inflate the numbers, they fudge the numbers, they cook the books, or more sinisterly, they actually unleash something that does kill people and you might say that's crazy talk they wouldn't do something like that well I got some bad news for you sunshine they did the Gulf of Tonkin incident getting us into Vietnam killing 50,000 plus American boys and girls yeah some nurses died over there they weren't soldiers then but they were in they were in those areas and how many hundreds of thousands, if not into the million, of Southeast Asians, Cambodians, Vietnamese, were killed because they faked an event to get us involved. Same goes with Iraq. These are the same people who did 9-11. What do you mean? did 9-11. If you don't know by now that 9-11 was an inside job, you're lost. You are lost. Because this is the time that if the Spirit of the Lord has not led you to that truth, you know, he's the, the Spirit of the Lord is the Spirit of Truth, the Bible say. It's the Spirit of Truth. And if you do not know by now that 9-11 was an inside job, <sighs> I mean, you might be saved, maybe, but let that let that shake you up. I mean, I could go on. USS Liberty. These are the same people who sank the USS Liberty. Had Israeli fighters attack an American ship, kill people for political ends. In, this was like in 67, I think. In the 60s. Late 60s. 
What else? How about all the fake shootings? How about the Boston bombing? These are the same people that would do these kind of things. What about a lot of Middle Eastern terror attacks where you see, as I mentioned before, the white hats, blue hats, blue helmets going in, rescuing people whose children, bloody, dirty, you know, victims of bombs. You see the same child in several of these bombings. You see actors, see a child laying down between the graves of his two parents, but he was paid to do that. They weren't his parents. But they make a news story out of it. Do you follow what I'm saying? There's so much deception. Take heed that no man deceive you. And um, we've got this uh, episode going on that I want to talk about being thankful for. I'm glad this is happening. On one hand, I'm very disheartened. You know, um, for years now, thinking, you know, I'm just watching the world burn because of the apathy from being disgusted with a lot of, quote, churchianity and just the... the uh, you know, to the point where it makes me just not want to really care or participate. But I thank God for this because it's giving me a haircut. It's quickening me. I thank God right now for Facebook. That evil platform. Why is it evil? Oh, well, it's a spy tool, first of all. That's enough. It's a spy tool. That's enough. However... It lets me know there are a lot of people, I may not know anybody in my town, but I do know people around the world who are like me. They can see it clearly. And they're vocal about it. And they're also not very accepted in their own hometown. They're not very, um, their own family and friends. Consider them Looney Tunes. Well... That's part of the price of following the Lord. You know, we're no better. The servant is not greater than his master. And he was spit upon, betrayed, ridiculed, challenged everywhere he went, questioned, talked about, lied about, ultimately crucified, killed, killed in shame, naked. Lifted up, naked, with a mocking sign above him that said, King of the Jews. Well, I'll tell you who he is. He's King of the Kings. He's Lord of Lords. He's King over all the, all the kings of the earth that ever were and ever will be. Greater than the Pope, greater than the President, greater than the Queen of England, greater than all the others throughout the earth. Greater. And you have to believe that and know it. And if you don't, you live in fear of these people with the power that they have. But they don't have any power. As, as Christ said to Pontius Pilate, you cannot take my life but that I don't lay it down for you. And they can't take your life or do anything to you that's not outside the scope of your God if you trust in him. But the good news is he'll deliver you out of all your troubles. He'll deliver me out of all my troubles. And I'm here this morning uh, getting fed myself to, to build me up. Because yesterday and today, and maybe it was because it was the first day I hadn't done one of these videos in a few days. One of, one of these... Uh, whatever you want to call it, recordings, um, where I spend the time doing this, because I didn't. I didn't do this on my own, let alone make a recording. And uh, all the new information coming out, of course, I I uh, didn't resist the urge to see what's going on. You know, What's the news today? What are people saying about it? What are, what are some of the people that are like, quote-unquote, truthers? What are they saying about it? and so on. 
And there's a lot of different angles on things. Excuse me, I have to sneeze. And if you said bless you, thank you very much. So, <clears throat> so I started getting anxious, you know, but I mean, how, listen, I'm, <laughs> I know I'm, I'm a sheep. I may, I'm not a sheeple as, as I use the term or some other people use the term, but I am, I am in, in need of a shepherd because sheep get frightened, you know, and, uh, there's only one shepherd for me, and that's the Master, the Son of God. And uh, we have to be we have to be lifting him up and looking to him. From whence comes our help? Whence comes? Where does our help come from? It comes from on high. It comes from the hills. It's coming from the Lord, not from man. You know, in, in the United States, millions and millions of people are looking for help in the form of a, a check or a deposit from their government. Who's their deliverer? Who's their provider? And it, it's kind of unfortunate. Um, you know, I, I guess everyone has to make their own choice, but uh, it's, it's basically being printed out of thin air. It's, it's two trillion dollars more in debt. I call them two trillion chains. It's slavery, debt slavery. I looked at the United States debt clock yesterday, and the United States is in debt twenty three point six trillion dollars, and I believe that's before the uh, two trillion just slapped on there. And each American owes like sixty, I think sixty seven thousand dollars. Okay, throw another thousand or two on there. You might say. Well, the bottom line is, is this is bad for everyone, and it, it, it's sad because by accepting this, people are voting for this kind of uh, slavery and basically socialism, communism even, and many Christians, so-called Christians. I'm getting far afield here, and um, let me let me just rein myself in by reading what I what I committed to reading every time I did one of these until I just um, know it by rote. And I I know this, but I I can't just cite it all the way through, and I haven't taken measures to really memorize it. But I will read it every time, and eventually, you know, enough times of that going to do the job before we turn into the word here let's let's, uh, let's glorify it a minute let's put it on the pedestal it belongs on because it's easy to put it on the floor or in a bookshelf where it gets dusty doesn't get picked up hey I'm not I'm not picking on anybody this is this happens to me all right the Bible contains the God, the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its histories are true, its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, and practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's charter. Here paradise is restored, heaven opened, and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is its grand subject, our good the design, and the glory of God its end. It should fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure. It is given you in life and will be opened at the judgment and be remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility 
and will reward the greatest labor and will condemn all who trifle with its sacred contents. And there are those that trifle with it, that lift verses out, and I believe lifted whole books out, like the Book of Enoch. I believe that ought to be in there. Perhaps the Book of Adam and Eve, and there's others. So these are these are interesting times. I mean, relatively speaking, there's been other per there's been more perilous times. But as Americans, we haven't been as touched um, by some of the things that we see happening, being constrained to our homes, uh, civil liberties being um, just yielded, yielding them, you know, and noticing how. Businesses are just shutting down. I saw a news article today that that over one third of Americans are going to be unemployed. They're expecting. That's a lot of people. There's a lot of problems that are going to come with that. When people when people lose everything, they lose it. Are you prepared when people lose it? Well, more than ever, we need to hide ourselves within the rock and that rock being the promises the truths the precepts of God the knowledge of God and the way of salvation we need to hide ourselves within the one who will deliver us and protect us from evil because there are people who are given over to evil from the lowest to the highest and uh Anyway, I want to make a point to be, to say I'm thankful this is happening because it's given me a haircut. You know, it's it's causing me to see some things as I've sort of known them, but kind of had glazed eyes over them. You know, the very fact that uh, I saw a pastor stand up there with the sheriff and say that, quoting Romans um, 13, how we need to obey the authorities that are given to us by God and everything, you know. And this has been predicted, this is what's going to happen in these times to corral Christians to trust the statists and the people who, uh, when I say statist, I'm talking about those who believe government, they're like gods. They know what's best for you. They will provide for you. They will protect you. You must look to them. You must obey them. At the point of a gun, by the way. Every law, behind every law is the point of a gun, pretty much. You need to think about that if you've never thought about that. And the fact that so many believers, well, I don't know if there are believers. They don't believe Psalm 91. They don't really believe it. I've gone over Psalm 91 twice. And that is that he'll protect us from the noise and pestilence, meaning diseases. And, and you know, I hate having to do this, but I guess I, I've got to. Does that mean that if you're a believer, that you'll never get sick? You know, I, I believed I was following God's will at one point in my life, um, that I made a lot of sacrifices to do certain things, and it, I ended up having cancer. Nearly killed me. And I believe that a lot of it resulted from a lot of the stress that I went through with that situation. I prayerfully entered that situation, you know. But you know what? The Lord delivered me out of that. Yeah, it was quite an experience. But now it's my testimony. And I thank God, you know, I also prayerfully considered at that time in dealing with the aftermath of the surgery... Do I do chemotherapy? The whole world wants you to do chemo. All the doctors want you to do chemo. But that still small voice inside of me said, trust me. I trusted him. And that's been a long, long time ago. And I even had a doctor tell me one time that I met. She said, you would not look as healthy they have such a ruddy face and all these things. She said a lot of nice things. She said, had you done the chemo? Chemotherapy. All right, I guess i got to say another disclaimer. Does that mean that 
no one ever should do chemotherapy. Look, everyone's every situation's different. I'm not I'm not I can't make that choice for somebody. All I know is that for me, I was given the faith to to uh, decline it. And the Lord delivered me. And even in this situation, I thank the Lord I have the faith to believe Psalm 91 that I'm this is not going to come near my house. Now, let's say I get sick. Believe me, there'll be people who would be, aha, aha, you know, look. It's like Job's friends came and where's your God, you know? Surely you must have sinned or something. I mean, there's all kinds of ways you can be attacked. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. I know who holds tomorrow. I emailed some some believers, quote unquote believers, and I said, "Be bold and courageous." You know. And one of the one of the people emailed me back and said, "Are you not going to go to the doctor if you can't breathe and your lungs are being scarred and da 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 da?" You know. Lady, all I said was, "Be bold and courageous. Don't be afraid." I didn't say that if you're sick, you don't get some help. You know, people like to put words in your mouth to make you look foolish. Especially people of faith. What is faith? It's the hope of things unseen. I can't show you why I believe. That's come experientially. And also it's a gift of God that you believe his word. You must believe it. You choose to believe it. I can't even begin to understand how that works and the power of that. There maybe is some even metaphysical type of mechanism, possibly, that when you believe something, when Christ said, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. What does that mean? Well, I can tell you one thing, and I've, I've done this before, I said this before, if you believe you're going to get sick, you probably will. Think about it like that. For some reason, that's easier to understand. If you believe you're going to be poor, you probably be, will be poor. If you believe that people don't like you, they're probably not going to like you. Uh, you know, it just you can you can translate this and transpose it, uh, place it on all kinds of all kinds of situations. And we build up our faith by listening to the Word of God, hearing the Word of God. I need to get to that because I'm just kind of, you know, you got to remember, I'm sitting here, most people, at least in my part of the world, are asleep yet, or just getting up and doing their things and not um, listening to me. So I'm talking to plastic, really. It's like talking to an answering machine, and we all know what that's like, okay? But I want to... Uh, I want, before I get into Psalm 103, it occurred to me, you know, I need to talk about um, a couple of things in these crazy times. And uh, I'm going to read this. This is from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 12 to 23. And I want to say, uh, uh, let's see, comfort the feeble-minded. You know, I'm skipping some things, and I don't, I just have the... I, I copied out the passage, and I don't have each, I don't have every um, sentence punctuated with what verse it is. So I'm picking up, I'm kind of skimming through here. Comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and be patient towards all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now that's what I wanted to that I wanted to lift out here. In everything give thanks. And then also it goes on and says, Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying or prophecies. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Okay, prove all things. So this this speaks to all the things we hear in the news. And Christ said, take heed that no man deceive you. 
And that has its application in those who would teach, quote unquote, the way of salvation. Are they preaching another gospel? Well, many are. But prove all things. When you hear things on the news, and if I could share everything I've ever seen over the years, I was saying most of the news is fake years before you heard it in the last couple years since we had this new president. One of these days I'm going to pull up an archive, I can prove it. You know, I was posting about this. Most of the news is fake. I talked about this in another episode, and I remember, for some reason, I do remember I had this vivid image of the moment in time, where I was sitting, where my desk was, everything when I posted about that Japanese, I think it was, airline airliner that landed without gear in uh, somewhere in Southern California. A woman was allegedly killed by a fire truck in the foam. She was run over, and that's the only casualty there was. Then they lifted that truck up, and, or that plane up, put it on the back of a flatbed truck or some kind of you know special vehicle that can move an entire plane like that. It was not a scratch on the underside. Think that through. Think about that. What, what was that all about? They put a plane out on the end of a runway, make a national news story, this big distraction, you know? What was that all about? Very strange. Very strange. I don't claim to know how to make sense of that, other than there are news stories that happen to get, you know, look over here. It's the art of um, misdirection. It's a, it's a form of mind control. Talk about this at the water cooler tomorrow, not the bill we're putting through the Congress at midnight, you know? Anyway, we need to prove all things. So when they tell you that, uh, for example, me just taking the number 200,000, dividing it by 300 million to get a percentage. What percentage is 200,000 of 300 million people? Like, let's think about this. I'm proving all things. You know, the headline that 200, 100 to 200,000 dead, it sounds like there's going to be a nuclear bomb going off. But that's not how it's going to happen. Throughout the nation, every year, tens of thousands of people die from the flu. Who dies from the flu? Usually it's somebody whose health is already compromised, the elderly, the very sick. Uh, you know, a cold might have thrown them over the edge, right? And it's peppered throughout the land. Peppered. Think about pepper. Putting pepper on your eggs, right? Think about that. It's not like it's going to wipe out your city. So you prove all things. Another way to look at that. There's a 99.9% .9 survival rate. 99.9% .9 of you are not going to be hurt by this. <laughs> you know? But what's happened? The entire nation's in a panic, on lockdown. They've given up their income. They've denied people being able to conduct business and commerce. People have given up their, their rights rights to assemble and there's even places you're, you're losing your rights to free speech you can't you can't say things about vaccinations you might be able to still say it but you're gonna pay a heavy price and I'm thankful back to the other verse I am thankful for all of this because one is just as uh, as much despair and kind of depressing it is particularly the way the quote-unquote people of God, air quotes here, people of God, have are frightened or looking to their government to help them or looking to their pastor to tell them what to do. And their pastor is towing the line, towing the official stories. If your pastor has never questioned the government or talked about anything like this, you should not be under him. You should, he's not your pastor. He's a gatekeeper. Or he's a parrot. Or he's worthless. Yeah, he's worthless. He's not a watchman. He's not a true pastor. People are coming to visit the quote-unquote house of the Lord once a week. And they hear feel-good messages. They get 20 minutes, the guy wrote on Friday, with, with half of it being entertainment. 
And now it's acceptable to throw five minutes of Disney films in there to, to illustrate their message or something. I've seen this, you know? Screw those guys! You get yourself with the Lord yourself, you know? Take take the reins. You want a pastor? Read Matthew Henry. He'll, he'll give you a haircut. Straighten you out. <laughs> you know? If you've got a heart for the truth... You don't need any man to convict you. you you're going to have a tender conscience. You're going to have a tender heart. You're going to you're gonna respond. When you read the word, it'll cut you to pieces. That's why people don't want it in the world. It convicts you of sin. It makes you realize you look at it like a mirror. I see myself in here, and I don't like what I see. Lord, help me. You know, cleanse me. He'll quicken it. You do wrong. If you're in the word, he'll, you do wrong. He'll bring it to your, he'll bring it to your memory. Yeah, you knew this. You shouldn't have uh, had fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness there, right? You shouldn't have been keeping company with these foolish people, you know? He'll remind you. Because he's teaching you, leading you, and guide you. He is a very, he's an ever-present help in times of trouble. And let me tell you, all our times are trouble. All of them. Every day is trouble. Yeah, we have respite. He leads us beside the still waters. Thank, thank God he does. But in this world, we have, we will have trouble. It's a promise. We can't just have the promise of everlasting life, the promise of he makes his mercies new every morning and all these things. But there's also the promise that in this life, we're going to have trouble. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, Bible say. You got afflictions? Hey, maybe, maybe you're righteous in Christ. You know whether that's true or not. Now, don't get me wrong. You don't have to be righteous in Christ to have afflictions. There's people who have afflictions. And in a lot of ways, many of the afflictions in our lives are those things that drive people to finally realize, I'm not God. Other people aren't God. You know, they don't, obviously, they're not necessarily thinking of them as a quote unquote God, but their provider, their deliverer, their hope, their object of their worship, whatever. It drives them to realize, I need something beyond here. I need to. I need the Lord to intervene. I need a crying out to the Lord to deliver me from my chains, or whatever they are, of despair, of addiction, of, you know, just all, all kinds of things. I'm getting way far afield. My point is, I'm thankful this thing's going on, and I hope it has its perfect work. I don't know when it will let up, or if it will let up, but I, I am thankful that it's continuing because it's done it's done a number on me. Like I said, I put it in terms of giving me a haircut. It's it's purifying maybe the church, but definitely it's helping to purify me. It's uh, just to to go outside and I try to get outside every day and go somewhere and the madness I see, the 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 group think the mind control. I've been saying this for years. Mind control is all around you. And I've been saying it and saying it and saying it. And I see it and I discern it. I try to point it out to people. Of course, I don't get much much love back on it, like uh, any acknowledgement. And then I see the manifestation and the way people are behaving. And it, it's a bit like the Twilight Zone. I mean, it really is kind of a freak, freak show. And uh, I can see, like you, you think back and... Um, like th think of a movie you've seen like let's say it's George Orwell's 1984 you see movies about World War II and, and, and things that went on in different societies you know show me your papers and, and just the way people are treated and treat each other and how do they get this way and it, it's like it all seems like fiction but fiction is fact now okay and how do people get this way well one degree at a time one degree at a time People have been brainwashed through Hollywood, schools, and even through their churches. Families have been destroyed. There's no leadership. There's lots of confusion. I'm in leadership of the home. You know, so many single mothers, so many absent fathers. Society being the courts turning it into matriarchal society where, where the men are punished and held down. And, um, 
it's just it's just so very complex you know it's a multi-faceted attack that's been going on for ages all right so I want to encourage also with um, Psalm 118 5 and 6 in this in the midst of this thing you know uh, we've got National Guard going door-to-door -door doing quote-unquote health checks okay getting used to seeing troops knocking on your door I called upon the Lord in distress the Lord answered me and set me in a large place the Lord is on my side I will not fear what can man do unto me so you know he may kill the body but he cannot kill the soul rather fear God who can destroy the soul so let's try to remember to fear the Lord and not not the police not the criminals who may try to take advantage of this and may prey upon people at home and not not the military the blue hats meaning like the national um, United Nations troops who knows where this is going okay right now that sounds to you maybe still like crazy talk well look around you today when you're out if you go out if you dare and see how everyone's being corralled cruise a few news sites and see in parts of the country where they are rolling out uh, they're hunting people down in New Jersey hunting them down that's the words they use in the news article hunting them down hunting down New Yorkers who escaped the quarantine Hmm. That was from Psalm 118, 5 and 6. You must believe it. What can man do unto you? Nothing. Except the Lord permit it. And if he permits it, you can trust him to deliver you. Now it came to pass on a certain day, this is from Luke 8, when he went into his ship with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go over to the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. There came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water, and were in jeopardy. And they came to him, and woke him, and saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose, and rebuked the wind, and raging of the water, and they, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said to them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying to one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commands even the winds and water, and they obey him. My brother and my sister, he commands this pestilence. He commands these leaders. He commands, meaning they'll obey him. And though we think that he sleeps while our ship is sinking. And he did sleep. But they awoke him by crying out to him. So are we crying out to the Lord to deliver us from the sinking ship the ship of fools he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water you know at one point we can hope that the Lord will arise and rebuke all these forces that are um, exploiting the situation to take your liberties, to take gain, gain power, uh, take money from you, destroy you, destroy your morale. You know that's an important resource that that um, I've not heard anyone talk about. It's more than just you're losing your job and losing your money. A lot of people are losing. I'm sure I haven't heard a lot about it yet, but there are people that are killing themselves. They're losing everything. They're fed up with the world already, and now this happens. They're fed up with people already, and now people treat each other like they've got the plague. When the the rate of this, you know, the, the degree of severity of this thing for an average healthy person is you might get the flu. Well, you might have gotten the flu anyway, man. You know, did you ever have the flu before? Okay, well, here you are. Oh well, this is a lot worse than that, is it? Have you read the Have you read the New England Journal of Medicine, where your Dr. Fauci, who's on on television, basically acting like the freaking Martians have invaded Earth, like uh, War of the Worlds, 
but in his in his paper, he's comparing this is nowhere near SARS or MERS, the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome or Southeast Asian. I think it was South SARS was something Asian res, Respiratory Syndrome. It's dramatically less uh, severe relative to those. And guess what? Did you have this pandemic going on then? No. What does that tell you? If you can't see it, then then you are really, really under strong delusion and you're deceived because of the media. And you've got to divorce yourself from it because they are lying to you. Well, people aren't that bad. I, I believe people are generally good. Well, that's not what the Bible say. Every man's a liar. What, what won't a man give for his skin to save his life? Well, do you know that a lot of, for a lot of people, saving their life means saving their status in life, saving their reputation. Save, what won't they give? You'd be surprised how many people are prostitutes, how many people are whores, what they would do for money. It's amazing. What would they do to avoid loss of something? It's the same thing. Penny saved is a penny earned, isn't it? All right. So the Lord, you can cry to him in our distress, and we have to believe. Is he, the, is he alive? Did he rise from the dead? Is he alive? Is he with us when we pray together? Or not? If it's not true, throw your Bible in the trash. Make something up to live by and keep on trucking but as for me I've, I've, I've uh, this is palpable to me I mean I've I've experienced the deliverance of the Lord and and the trials of the Lord his loving kindness his care his blessings his provision his faithfulness when I don't see how I'm going to pay a bill for example or or you know, how I'm going to get out of some situation that, that it just seems all jammed up. How, how this relationship is ever going to be at peace, or you name it. He's given me wisdom in many situations. Any situation, really, I ask for wisdom. I ultimately get the wisdom. I've had experiential um, knowledge of the living God. And that's a precious thing. A precious thing. And if you don't have that, start today. Believe him for the littlest thing. If you lose your keys, <laughs> Lord, help me find my keys. You know? You don't think he'll answer that prayer? I've, that, I pray that a lot. Not that particular one, but when I lose stuff, you know, I still don't stop and do that the first moment. It's after I've started to like realize this is getting ridiculous, and then I pray, and boom, there it is. Now that may not may not be the same way for you, you know. The Lord orders all our steps, and I don't know. I can't really. Oh, I'm just using that as a uh, colorful example of like right down to the very hairs on your head. They're numbered. That He's an ever-present help in times of trouble. That He is close to you. He sticks closer than a brother. He gave His life for you and for me. Don't let these talking heads tell you how life's going to be. Let the Lord tell you how life is and life's going to be. One of these days, they'll be gone. The wicked, we're going to look around and say, where are they? Somewhere there'll be a little smolder of smoke coming up. You don't believe me? Let me read the from Psalm 37. Just a moment, let me pull that up. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Don't be envious against the workers of in iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you shall dwell in the land, and verily you shall be fed. Let's see here. Evil doers will be cut off, but those that wait on the Lord will inherit the earth. 
For yet a little while the wicked will not be. You'll consider his place and it shall not be. Right? Down in verse 20 it says, The wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume. Into smoke they consume away. Yeah. Let me tell you this. Let me back up a couple verses here. The arms of the wicked man, that means all their powers. All the powers of the wicked. All their devices. The arms of the wicked shall be broken. But the Lord upholds the righteous. The righteous are those who have the righteousness of Christ. Make no mistake. It's not those who keep the law and are look good and smell good and act good and no one can speak evil of them because they are pillars of the community. No, my friend, the righteous is that sinner that begged the Lord to for forgive him on his knees with tears while the, while the Pharisee stood in the place Praying, saying, thank you, Lord, I'm not like this or lot here. You know, righteous are those who have the righteousness of Christ imputed to them by faith, which is available to you this very moment. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine, they'll be satisfied. That's you. It's me. Let's believe it. Okay? I'm, I'm believing it, you know. Uh, let me back up here. Psalm 34 says, "Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt His name together." And that's, you know, that's what we're doing. This is that's what we're doing right now. And this is what I want you to think about today as well. I sought the Lord, and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to the Lord. Ask him to deliver you from your fears. Not just this pestilence. As I've said time and again, the fear is the virus. They looked unto him and were lightened. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. That's my testimony. And I still have troubles. New troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around them that fear him and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Yeah. And I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the um I'm gonna look at that word means exactly. Just a moment. Okay, that word fear is what I wanted to look up. When you fear the Lord. It means, it means reverence. When you revere the Lord. Blessed are those that fear the Lord, that reverence the Lord, that exalt, the, exalt His name. You know. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers Him out of them all keeps all his bones and not one of them is broken. Now that's that's prophetic of Christ, you know, when he's on the cross. So believe this this by faith. Now I wanted to get into Psalm 103, but I think um I think this has been a long enough time together. Long enough video and enough. And uh you know, that's the direction it went in. So um, I'm going to end on some music and then, then we'll just, uh, make a great day. And I hope you do. Thank you for listening.
Cover me with your 